but we're going to do our class project. And I emailed all y'all about. So everybody take out a notebook. Your notebook. You're supposed to bring a notebook today. Now, some of you, did I hit record? Some of you are going to say, what the heck did you do? I'll explain after I pass it back. We're going to talk about this outline. Why am I talking about this outline? Uh, yeah, sounds like a good idea. Wonder why I don't do that? Because I'm, I'm a loser. That's why, right? The reason I'm passing this out. As I go across the notebooks that I don't see outlines in, is since y'all will not pass them out, since y'all will not print them out, you know, it's a hard thing. You got to click on it, you got to hit print, and then you have to walk over to the printer and pick it up. Right? This is our project today, our first 30 minutes of class. We're going to talk about this. Why? Huh? No, because I, don't, because I don't follow. But we're going to talk about it. It's called using a little bit of common sense. Okay. Now, three people, do you have your outlines, Miss Simmons, Miss Fuller, and Miss Crippen? Do you have them? Yes. Miss Simmons, do you have an outline? Hello. Are you going to walk it out? I have. Mr. Crittenden, do you have an outline? I do. Mr. Crittenden, do you have an outline? I do. Miss Fuller, do you have an outline? Yes. Miss Simmons, do you have an outline? Do you have a sense before? I don't think she can hear me. Let me see right quick if she can hear me. She's talking to somebody else right now. Miss so Simmons, can you hear me? Now, everybody has, except for Miss Simmons, the outline that I told you to print out the first day of class. The reason I'm having to do this is because over the weekend, I received several emails from several different classes, not just this class, asking me about homework. When's the test due? I told you they would do that, did I not? But it just infuriates me no matter what because I told y'all how to do this. All right? Now, there are... So when I when I say DAs and I say losers and stuff like that, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about I did it this morning in my 8 o'clock class. I did the same thing. Passed out their syllabus, their outline. And we'll do it tomorrow with my two classes tomorrow. Had had to do it with the online class because I put the dates in there. And see, that's what is so bothering y'all when I say y'all students. Y'all are... Condition. What are y'all conditioned? Oh, everything. I, I mean, you're conditioned to where I have to give you every, I have to tell you where the bathroom is. I have to tell you where the cafeteria is. I have, not all. I'm not saying everybody in here. I'm saying the 6 to 12 emails that I got this week. They're conditioned. Miss Simmons, you there? That's the only reason she's usually been talking. Mr. Simmons. Do y'all hear that? That's coming from her. Yeah. Well, she'll get it eventually. 
All right, so let's turn it to our outline. And there's the outline. Now, Hubert, it has no dates on it. Why is this going to help us? What's that? Three. So that tells me, as a student, hmm, he's got three more tests to go. I mean, he's got three more sections, so I shouldn't worry about the test, but until next week. And he was being correct and using common sense, yes. But, what if you don't have this sheet? I've already covered two sections. What are you playing? Oh my God! Oh my God! See why you need to see why you need to print off the sheet. Okay, that's the first thing. Print the sheet off. Second thing, put it in your notebook. Why? Well, let's say let's say you had a morning like I. I'm gonna tell you the morning I've had. Okay, first of all, been sick since Thursday. There's nothing you can to take this. Allergies turning into bronchitis. I still got the Marlboro Red call. I still got that. It's awful. But anyway, I got it this morning. Front power of my truck was going. I the air compressor, pulled it out, printed it up, um, printed it up, pumped it up, plugged it, still had a leak. And this was at 6 30 in the morning. Okay? I went outside to find my truck. And, you, know, you, you see the truck like leaning, you know something's wrong. Right. So anyway, so I go up, kick the kid out of bed, get him ready, and uh, we're in the we're in the kitchen eating and talking and whatever. And he just informs me that he has two homework assignments to do. So that set off World War Three. Okay. So once we got through being mad at each other, of course, I had the right to be mad because, so, anyway, my thoughts were, I had class at 8 o'clock. He has two homework times at 8 o'clock. I got to class at 8 o'clock. It's about 7.30 right about now. I told him, I said, you're going to work with me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I said, we're going to come back. So I've had that type of morning this morning. So the eight o'clock class caught the brunt this morning. They they really uh, it was a, I was need to buy some donuts or something. Like that. But, be okay. but anyway, to make a long story short, first, and your, your intention was to make a class today, and he wasn't. Well, then Hubert, the coffee boy over eight point two today. What else tells you what I can do? What else? Besides the outline, what else will tell you? If you did not come here today, what else will tell you? The video on YouTube. What a fun thing. And then I bet Hubert will say something about homework in there. If he covers that point thirty, I bet he'll say something about homework. Well, that'll move us a little closer to the unit one test. Well, let's see. If he goes over eight point three today, and we meet Thursday, he will probably go over eight point four. And if he's really Tuesday of next week will be eight point five, he'll probably start talking about fifth Thursday. And then you go Thursday. What's Thursday? Some of on your phone. What's Thursday? Huh? I'm going to put September 14th right here. What's three and a half weeks after the first day of class? I told y'all right there now, remember? I said count three and a half weeks per year. September the 19th is a tentative day. Okay, so wait a minute. I've used, you but I haven't told me anything, and I've got two dates for a possible test. The 14th through the 19th. What's the 19th on? What's the... That's the about the story. What's the 14th? So what's in between the 14th and the 19th? Oh, wait a minute. So now we just got to figure out whether Hubert 
flights to get tests before the weekend or after the weekend. Well, I'm one of those that all the time in the world, so after the weekend. So do you think I'm going to sign that test on the 14th, or do you think I'm going to sign it on the 19th? I'm going to sign it for the 19th because I want you to have that whole week. All right. So right now, we're probably talking about the, the test being somewhere between 14th and the 19th of September. Okay? Well, what do you think the homework is going to do when the test starts? Huh? I heard, I heard, I heard. It's going to end. It's going to terminate. Why are you going to terminate the homework before the test starts? Well, you should have what? You should have done it. That's the whole purpose of homework, to get ready for the test. Not to do it, do it during the test. So, if Hubert will probably start to, between the 14th and the 19th, then I need to have my homework on 8.1 through 8.5 done by when? And I have told y'all to do the homework. And you can make all of that yourself just by looking at this. Okay, like I say, you have to print it out first. I, I guarantee you, there's eight people in here or nine. I guarantee you five of y'all haven't even printed this out yet. I know one of you hasn't. Okay, but he ain't calling about them. Now, again, I'm not talking about this class. I'm talking about 12 students out of 150. 120. Anybody have any questions about that? Now, Mr. Barnes, Mr. Keller, you're so loud. They, those three right there can tell you. When we get toward the end of the homework and the, and the beginning of the test, what do I do in class? You remember what I do in class when I'm getting ready to assign the test? What do I do? Say again. Go over what? Say it, say it loud one more time. I go over the test. And then what I do after I go over the test? You remember? Yeah. I sign a what? You know. I sign what? When you test this what? Do you? So y'all actually see when I post the test, uh, y'all see when I bring the test in, I put the bonus questions on it, I, I give the ending date, and I give the ending date. And you know what? You know what else is another, it's a miracle of technology? You know what happens when I put the beginning date and the ending date in the My Lab Plus? It stays on there. So therefore, when you pull up your calendar, when your dashboard comes up, guess what it has on the calendar? It has test due, test due, test due, test due, 14. September 14th, September 15th, September 16th. Same thing with the homework. What do I do after I sign the homework? I mean, after I sign the test. You remember? I sign the presentation for the what? For the homework. I do it in class. It's on the videos. And when I do it in the My Last Plus, guess what? It stays in there. So all you got to do when you want to find out the Dates is looking my last plus. Well, Hubert, there ain't no dates in there right now. Well, then you don't need to what? You don't need to worry about it. That's number three. If there ain't no dates, you don't need to worry about it. But oh my God, you would think that I was pulling hen's teeth, trying to. Oh, oh, okay. okay. I've had twelve people. I'm really freaking out. I'm really freaking out. Well, they're going to freak out more because I'm not responding to them. You have a work email. Oh, I love them. You know what I have found? 
in my 20 years of teaching, the people that are worried about the dates most are the people that what? Wait till the last second to procrastinate. That's what I have found out. Okay. While everybody's got this in their notebooks, I want you to tape it. I want you to, there's some extra ones up here. You can take it with you for those that lose your notebook and get burned up in car crash and all that stuff. Here's some extra ones. Does anybody have any questions about what I just went over today? So we're talking about a test probably in the next couple of weeks. Will I give a test out while half the class doesn't know the material? No, I will not. My three students in here will tell you that if nobody else will. Okay? I'm not one of these teachers that say, well, if you don't know it, I don't care. I'm not one of those teachers. But that depends on the questions that you send me. I haven't seen any questions. So that means one, means one of two things. What does that mean? Exactly. So I'm going on to 8.3. Okay, thank you. I knew there was something I was supposed to cover. We'll go over that today. Okay, good. All right, how about people at home? Y'all got any questions? You scared to ask them? Is that what it is? Okay, well, good. All right, let's go back to 8.1, and let's go over. I believe, it's, I, believe I left off 8.1 with... Arc length. Did I? We did arc length. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll start from right here. Now, like I said before, you will see this again. So if there's anything you need to uh, put in your notebook, this is one. And we, co we already covered our point, And that is the measurement of the arc, which is the curve, which, hold on a second. I thought I had everything turned on, I don't. Come on, hurry up. I don't know what that is for. So, So, if I give you a angle, no matter what kind of angle, remember it's based on the angle of what? Circle. And curve to that circle is what base the rate was what base on the rate. Okay, so I've got angle here, and then we've got the radius here, the radius here, and this curve length right here is called the arc length. Now, S equals R sine of theta. I mean, it's R, R theta. S is equal to R theta. You might as well get used to this. Because when you get into physics and you get into your first semester of cal calculus and your second semester of calculus, you're going to see y is equal to r sine theta and x is equal to r cosine theta. So you might want to just go ahead and start putting that somewhere in your notebook because this is the continuation of this. 
and of course with the period, not the period, but the sector, and we'll get to the angular velocity, you're still going to be using stuff like this. Now this is for later. I think I showed y'all this in the uh, first But anyway, and it's new radius. So that's the arc length, or the length of the curve. Now, of course, I'm not going to cover this. Have we, have we done this one? Got to change it to what? What do you change it? 144 to? 144 degrees over 1 is equal to 180. I'm sorry. Pi over what? 180. Put the degrees on the bottom. So 144 pi over 180 and reduce to whatever it needs to be times what's the radius? 18.2. And that's equal to r point s. And that should be, I think we did that. And there it is. So if you took 144 pi and divided by 180 and multiplied it by 18.2, you get 45.74. Now, the area of a sector, I think that's where we left off. Um, that would be like this. Again, there's your curve. That would be like... Area. Now, you'll see a lot of derivations of this when we get into civil engineering. I spent two and a half years of my life in civil engineering at Clemson. And you see a lot of it, especially when you go into your traffic and your highway you building and you're talking about horizontal and vertical curves and how many acreage in the right of way and all of that good stuff. That's where you're going to derive derived from that formula, okay? So if they give you an example, make sure you know how to do it, and it's just plug and chug. We'll go ahead and, they didn't give us one. Okay, so it must not be that important. All right, linear and angular speed. The angular speed is omega, which measures the speed of the rotation and is defined by that. So theta over t is radians in time. That will be given to you. So you need to write that down. That will be given. Linear speed, and I think that's lowercase tau, but I'm not sure. Tau is in tow, T-O-W, but I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to, uh, Somebody Google the Greek alphabet right quick, lowercase, and see what it looks like. It looks like a V or a U. That's why I'm thinking it's tau. I don't think it's lambda. Somebody look it up. But that is equal to S over T. Well, what is S? S is your what? Curve length. So that'd be R theta over T, which is this right here. And that's what they're giving you. So the linear speed is the distance, is measuring the speed traveled along the arc length. That's the linear speed. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Is it, does it look like a U? Looks like a little V or a U? I didn't know that. When you say it's mu, Okay. So new 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 is equal to R times sigma or omega. But that linear speed, you need to write that linear speed down because I think they may be asking that on some of the questions. I think the next question coming up. Epsilon? 
Hmm. I'll be honest with you. I've never seen it before. It's like the, the new and that one are like so similar, but uh-huh. the Amazon has a slightly different design. Uh-huh. And it's like the Amazon Echo Fire Stick is like the Echo Fire Stick. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I've been through a lot of math classes in my life. I've never seen that before. So don't feel bad if you don't know it. But linear speed is there's several things. You can do S over T. You can do R theta over T, or you can do R times your angular speed. Okay? And I think they'll probably tie it in with a problem. I think they don't know, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. This is the problem we we're going to do. It says a belt runs a pulley of radius 6 centimeters at 80 revolutions per minute. 80 revolutions per minute. Now remember, it's always nice to write things down. 80 revolutions per what? That might be helpful. What's a revolution? Well, a revolution is 360 degrees, right? Or what? Is what? Huh? Two pi. So you could write this as one revolution is equal to 360 degrees, or one revolution is equal to two what? Now, which one do you think we're going to go with? Why? Huh? Because it's harder? Yeah. Because it's non, non real world? Yeah. Because everything that we're dealing with when it comes to arc length, angular velocity, and linear velocity has to do with what? Radius. That's why. Now it says find the angular speed in radians per what? Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and change this. Okay? How many revolutions? There's one revolution in two what? Pi. And how many minutes? Okay, we need what? We need radius per second. So we've got a it's one minute is equal to how many seconds? Now let's take our canceling rod. Minutes. Revolutions. That's it. So whatever we do, we've got to do the this because that's what they want. So let's take a look. A. A says we want the angular velocity. Now get somebody go back in your notes, your pages. What is the angular velocity? Radians over what? That thing for velocity. And the velocity. Okay. Amazing. Radians, I thought it was a formula. I guess I was wrong. Right. Oh, that's another thing. Oh, no. uh, hey. Okay, there you go. Not really. I have class. Whoa, well, she's there. Miss Simmons is finally Thank there. You. you there, Miss Simmons? Now, they probably, I don't know if they did the same way I did. Yep, 160, they did. 
See if you come out with the same thing I come out with, or see if you come out with it. Looks like to me you're going to come out with the same thing, but let's see what we come out with. So we've got radians. Radians is right here. Over 60 seconds. So 180 pi. Over 60. I'm going to trick a little bit more. These zeros cancel. And 18 divided by 6 is what? It's a miracle. 3 pi per what? 3 pi per second. And what is pi? Three, you know, what is pi as far as the revolution? 180. So that's how many revolutions? One and a half revolutions per what? So that's equal to one and a half revolutions per second. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be one sixty. Thank you. One sixty. Okay, that changes everything. I don't know where I came up with that. Was trying to make it easy. I don't know. One sixty. All right. So that'd be one sixty. That'd be sixteen over six, which is two 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 point three. See, I'll check that. Y'all check me. What is that? What is 16 divided by 6? Just check me right there. 2.6. 2.7. So 2.7 or 3 pi still be what? Still be a, still be one and a half revolution. All right, now keep that because what are you going to do with this? You're going to use it for linear speed. And then it'll make a whole lot of sense. Now, how fast is this pulley turning? It's turning at 2.7 pi per second or one and a half revolutions per second. Now, what are we used to in real life? Revolutions per second? Revolutions per minute, and they're called RPM. So I want to change it back because I think revolution per second is ridiculous. 2.7, that's 3, you know, 2.7, I'm thinking. 2.7 times 5 over 1 second. And there's 3,600 seconds in a what? I'm sorry. 3,600 seconds in an hour, right? Or 60 seconds. I think it's that In one minute. There we go. Right? So seconds would cancel. So you multiply. Somebody take. Well, 2 pi, 2.7 pi, 3 pi, that's 2 pi, and you add pi, that'd be 1 and a half. So take 1.5, multiply by 60, which is what? 60 plus 30, which is 90. So you're talking about 90 revolutions per what? So that pulley is turning about 90 revolutions per minute. Is that going pretty fast or slow? Slow. Especially when you're talking about your car turning 2,000 RPMs. Now, did you need that 90 RPMs? No. Do you need it for the real world? Yes. To understand what RPMs is. 
Because you can talk to the human face about RPSs. Nobody can forget what RPSs is. So, um, well, the 2.7 is, we said that's three, right? Mm -hmm. Round it to three. What's three pi as far as revolutions? Mm -hmm. What's three oh, okay. it's, a, right. it's one and a half revolutions. Okay, so that's what I did. And one times 60 is 60, and then half of 60 is 30, that's 90. So, so your, your pulley is six, now, six centimeters. How big is that? Oh, shoot. Just put in. Oh, yes. Your uh, fingernail is a centimeter, right? A centimeter wide, close to it. Y'all have any idea what I'm talking about? Okay. Yes, no, maybe. So, six centimeters. So, you got a pulley. It's probably about the size of a a pulley on the end of a generator or something, you know, small, probably something like that. And it's turning about 90 revolutions per minute. So for a pulley, it's going fairly slow. Now, they want to know what the linear speed is. How fast is a point on that pulley actually going? This is where you people in physics and you people that belong on that type of stuff, you get crazy about it. Remember I told you about the slingshot? Right now you just found out how many revolutions per minute that slingshot is going. Now you will find out how fast the stone was traveling around that circle. So. There we go. So you take the six centimeters and you multiply it by the revolutions. And that comes out to 50 centimeters per second. Does that tell you anything? No. Doesn't tell you a bad thing. How many of you think about going in centimeters per second? So I want you to change that centimeters per second. Let's test your skills. You might have to use your phone. Centimeters per second. 50 centimeters per second. No problem. Change that into what we used to. Miles per what? Miles per hour. Change it. You don't have to Google one centimeter equals how many inches or feet or what it is. Yeah, I use feet. All right. Well, let's check it. Somebody tell me what one centimeter equals as far as feet. Look up. Look up one centimeter. One centimeter equals. Point zero three two. Thank you. All right, so here we go. And this is good because y'all need to learn how to do this. But one, you haven't done done it. You haven't done it in a long time. And two, when you go into physics and you go into calculus, you're gonna you go revisit it. So uh, there's sixty seconds in a minute. In 60 minutes, you know what? An hour. So you've got the hour taken care of. And there is point one centimeter equals point zero three feet. Zero three feet. How many feet are in a mile? Five thousand. I mean, five thousand two hundred what? All right, do the math. So that's 50 times 3,600 times 0.032 all over 
So that's going to be equal to 5.0 times 10 to the first, 3.6 times 10 to the third, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 2. I don't have to do it if y'all want it. 5.28 times 10 to the third. So instead of relying on the calculator, I'm going to try to do as much as I can on scientific notation. So, 5 times 3.6, that's going to be 18, right? So that's 18 times 10 to the fourth power. So that's 18 times 10 to the fourth power times 3.2 times 10 to the negative second power over 5.28 times oh, 10 wow. to the third. And that's going to be 18.1, I mean, I'm sorry, 18. I was thinking out loud, so you know, bear with me a minute. 18 times 3 is what? 18 times 3 is 64. Somebody check my hand. That's 54 times. Okay, well, I'm just doing it in my head. So, that be, so 18 times 3 is what? 57.6 times 10 to the, what is that? 4, 4, 2 is 2. Over. 5.28 times 10 to the third, and that's going to give me 57.6, that'd be 11, times 10 to the negative 1, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so 0.11, or 1.1, 1.09, 1 or 1.1. .1. Okay, so that sucker's going 1.1 miles per hour. Now, if you can do that unit conversion, you're good. You're good for physics. And how did you get it? And that's going to do you well in calculus. Okay. okay. So, 1.1, and if you can get that with a unit conversion, then you're, or if you understand most of what I've done on this, then you're good to go for calculus and other things. Because there's a lot of teachers that will ask you to convert because it doesn't make sense. If I tell you that that thing is traveling 50 centimeters per second, you have no idea if it's traveling fast or slow. Now, do you? You don't. Because you don't think in terms of that. miles per hour. So is what? And we already said that before with revolutions per minute. When we think of revolutions per minute being fast, we think of 3,000 to 9,000. That's that's fast. See, when I teach math, especially when we get into calculus, trig and calculus, I don't teach math just regurgitation. I teach math that at least when you leave my class, you have some concept of some topics that I discuss. I don't teach that. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the 14th. Uh, okay. We're going to go ahead and go to the Because you'll find out if you don't know the trig, you're not going to know the calculus. And if you don't know the calculus, you're not going to know the second calculus. It works very scarcely. Okay. No coffee. Just me and my marble red coffee. I know somebody's having a party at home. Who's that? Miss Fuller, are you having a party? I think it, I think it's Miss Simmons. I think she's having a party. I unmuted it. Know that? All right. 
another part of this. Uh, let's go to our second page 14. <laughs> Yeah, y'all just go ahead and have a good time while we're having class. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Did they finally mute it? No? Oh, now. Yes, is today is it twelve twenty today? Okay. Yeah, because if people bust down the door. Say again. Okay. You simmon. I didn't know I had that ability. How about that? Y'all got y'all still there, Miss Fuller? Mr. Crittenden, you there? Huh? <laughs> Oh, I muted everybody? Yes. No, I didn't. Yes. They turned theirs on. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't know what's up. Miss Simmons was sick. I know she's sick, so I don't know if she had to go to her kid's school or whatever. Something's going on. I think she's sick or something. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know what. That sounded like a class or something. I don't know what's going on. All right, decide whether each statement is possible. Okay. This is a little drill. I'm not really concerned with this. Sign is equal. To, that's going back to, okay. Remember me telling you that, yeah. That's going back to, let me, uh... In other words, when you're thinking about, and I'm just going to, you don't have to write this down, okay? In, in, in calculus, there's a term that says all students take calculus, okay? And all means here that all the trigonometric functions are what? Positive. Students, just the sign and the what? What goes with sign? No secret or positive. Everything else is what? Negative. And that's based on that x being what? If you, if you, know, if you plot a point over here, that x is always going to be what? Negative. That's one. All right. Now, since the x is negative, the only thing up here is going to be positive as a sign of cosecant. What about down here? The tan and the what? Cotan. They're positive and everything else is negative. And here, the cosine and the what? They're positive and everything else is negative. That's basically what they're talking about here. Um, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on this because I think it comes with common sense. And let me just show you. If I have an angle in the first quadrant, then I know my x is positive and my what? My y is positive, so I know everything is going to be positive. But when it comes to here, I know this is negative and this is positive. So that means I'm going to have some negatives. So something is possible to be negative here, and of course you know that with all students take calculus, you know that the only thing negative here would be your tan, cotan, and your cosecant, or not cosecant, but your cosine 
and your secret. So you know all of those are negative, and the only thing that's positive in the second quadrant is your all students, which is your sine and your cosecant. You see what I'm saying? Now, you can learn all students take calculus, or you can do this, but that's what they're teaching. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because you're going to get it anyway. Between now and calculus, it's all students take calculus. Uh, not a big deal. But I do want to get to the Here we go. All right, now I want everybody to look at this because it's a kind of a derivation. But three new identities come from the Pythagorean theorem. And if you divide by r squared, you're going to get this. And this right here, remember me telling you about r sine theta and r cosine theta? Well, let me just show it. I'm sorry. It's better for me to show it. X is equal to R cosine theta. And Y is equal to R sine theta. Now, if I divide this by r, and divide this by r, cosine of theta is equal to what? If I divide this by r, now if I have x squared, plus y squared is equal to 1, what can I plug in to x and y? Or vice versa, huh? Well, you can. Basically, what happens is you get cosine in there and you get sine in there. It's basically based on the x and the y. That's basically what they're doing right there. And it's based on this right here. Okay? Now, when you when you get this right here, basically, well, let me just show you. That's where it comes from. Let's go back here. I should quit going by these platforms. I think they must be up more than a I should just teach. I'm trying to be beneficial to y'all. There. There it is. See the X over R? There we go. Now, now I see it. I thought I left out one spot. X squared over R squared, y, or Y squared over R squared, and R squared over R squared. If you divide by R squared all the way through, you get this. Now what is X over R? I just showed you. X over R is what? Cosine. So if X over R is cosine, then I can put, instead of X over R, I can put cosine. Y over R is sine. And you have your first, and out of all three, the most used. You will see sine squared plus cosine squared the rest of your academic life if you were staying in engineering and sciences. Okay? Now you can do it the other way. Solve for x. I meant divide through by x squared. If I divide through by x squared, I get 1 plus y over x squared minus r over x squared. And you get this by just using your y over x. Oscar had a hunk of apple. Of apple. Of apple.
And that's your second most used. And then this one, I very rarely see it. This one is the third one. I very rarely see that one. Those are your three Pythagorean identities. Now, first thing you should do, well, this is what I tell students to do. Go home. When you go home tonight, Google Pythagorean identity. No. Incoming message. Google trig identities. Trig identities. And there's a green sheet. I'm telling this to students and half of them probably didn't even come out this thing. So I'm just letting you know. Just think it out loud. Hold on a second. I'm going to show you what it looks like because it's a good, it's actually a good handout, especially for you testing here. Trig identities. Oops. And go to images and it's green. There it is. There it is right there. Right there. Let's see if you can make it larger or whatever. Bring it in and paint. Bring it in as a as a picture, and then you know, do whatever you need to do to it. Just uh, open the image in the tab. I don't know if that'll work. And save it and print it out, or go to ecalc.com or wherever it comes from. Go there and get it. But that's, and, and you won't see, there they are, right there. Well, I'm going to try to, there it is. There's the three right there. So make sure you print this green sheet out or one like it soon, very soon. Because I don't want you copying all these identities in your notebook and then not being able to put all of them on paper. I want you to go get the outline as soon as you can so you can find them on here and use your notes because people get lost a lot of students get lost and confused during the during the identity section because they don't know if they've got everything in their notebook they don't know if they've got everything copied and they get lost so just tell me all right Okay, so there's three trig identities. Now, the second, the first most used is this first one right here. The second identities that are most used is these guys. And they're called the quotient identities right here. And you're going to see these things used over and over and over in this class. So write them down. Now in this class, we're going to do a lot of rewriting. So if I ask you to write tangent squared theta, you would say, okay, that'd be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Wait a minute, sine squared is equal to cosine squared minus one. And cosine squared is sine squared minus one, so I could rewrite it as Pythagorean I did. See what I'm saying? And it gets even worse, all right? There's identities where you rewrite in this class that's like a half a page. All right, so I'm, I'm telling you, it all starts right now as far as the identities. These two sets of identities, yes, you're going to have to learn them. Okay, there is no around them. Because if they don't get you now, they're going to get you next semester in calculus. Okay. Find the sine of theta and cosine of theta if tan of theta is equal to 4 over 3. Now, first of all, I do things differently with these. I don't know. Some, some books teach them different. I draw it out. So that's the first thing I tell you to do, draw it out. 
So draw it out. Tan of four thirds and theta is in quadrant what? So that's the lower left hand corner. All students take. So what is tangent in the third quarter? So it should come out, your answer should come out to be positive. Oh, it's sine and cosine. I'm sorry, all students take. They'll be negative. The sine and the cosine will be negative. Now it says you use the quotient identities. The quotient identities on the previous page. Let me show you how I do it, and I teach my students the same thing, because sometimes books and academia tell you how to go around the world just to find something that's real simple. Is equal to four over three. Tangent. Oscar had a hump of what? So that means that the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, and it's in tangent. It's in number. So that means that both of the four and the three has to be what? negative for this to come out to be positive. So we got a, take my handy dandy, I'm going to take my red marker, that'll be that four right there, that's the opposite, and my little man is standing right here, he's got one foot on the hypotenuse and one foot on the what? The adjacent. So that means the opposite's over here. So that means that's going to be a negative point. Means the blue is negative what? Okay, now I, I just out of giggles, I always tell students to find the what? Find the hypotenuse in case you need it. So what's the hypotenuse? Five. And it's always what? Positive. That's right, class. So now you can find anything you want. Sine equals Oscar hat, which is equal to what? Negative 4 over what? 5. Cosine. A hump. Which is equal to negative 3 over what? 5. So to me, that's real simple. Now you can also do it with identities. Okay. Look what they did. They took the four thirds and plugged it in for the tangent. And then you can use one plus the tangent of theta is equal to the secant of theta. That's 
probably get the rate of one plus what's the tangent? The value of tangent is four thirds. Got to square it. So that's going to be one, which is three thirds, plus sixteen over nine. Sorry, the nine minutes. is equal to secant squared theta. And that's going to be 25 over what? 9 is equal to secant theta. And how do you undo a square root? I mean, how do you undo a square? That square root of both sides. So secant of theta is equal to 5 over what? 5 over 3. Now, what is the secret? Oscar had a hump of apple. A hump, hump A, right? So that's hump A. And that's going to be 5 is the hypotenuse. 5 is equal to uh, hypotenuse is equal to 5. And the adjacent is equal to 3. So therefore, by the Pythagorean theorem, we'll do it again. 25 minus 9 is 16. 16 is 4. So opposite is equal to 4. We've still got a problem if we do it this way. What's the problem? Huh? you got to remember the signs. And that's the catch. That's what you, you know, when you do the, the first way that I showed you, you don't forget the signs. If you do it this way, you may forget the signs. Okay? And a lot of you say, well, how did they get negative 5 thirds? How did they get negative 5 thirds? Five thirds. How did they get that? I'm sorry, what? Well, they're remembering quadrant three. Yes. That's where they're getting that. And they know the hypotenuse cannot be what? So they just take that right there, and then they're saying, okay, then the three has to be negative. You can do it in the problem, or you can do it where? At the end of a problem. But the problem with doing it this way is you might what? Forget or get confused, and then you won't get the signs mixed up. So that's why I always say, if you want to do it the first way, at least you address the signs, what, first. You do it however you want to. It doesn't matter to me. Just don't fuss at me if you forget to do it. I know it's 1220. I've already got the roll, haven't I? Except for Mr. Keller. I've got to go back and change it for him. If you don't be late, text me, okay? All right, let's see. What's the next thing? Question of is that the last one? Okay, that's it. All right, see, the, the five identities you're going to have to know out of 8.2 are those Pythagorean identities and the quotient identities. Make sure you know that. Make sure you get the 8.2 homework done. Make sure you send it to me if you need to. Capiche? All right. Uh, people, Skype, y'all have a good one. Talk to you later. Yeah. Got to send this to the YouTube, so I got to turn it off. See you.